Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back here on Mark's Aquatics. It's Wednesday and I have ordered a better and it arrived today about two minutes ago the postman bought it so I thought we'd do a little unboxing and see what we've got for the uh, for that new tank that we've built I'm going to put this little guy in the shrimp room for the time being in one of the nice tanks in there while this one cycles out lovely little polystyrene box inside which we can take out so hopefully it's nice and warm it's always good to uh, to film unboxings of fish because if, uh, if anything's gone wrong or they've been treated badly through the post you've got some proof that uh, about what went on so I think we're nearly there. Look at that. Beautifully packed. Very healthy looking. Let's take this little guy out and have a look. Oh, that's absolutely stunning. Look at that. He's absolutely gorgeous. Red's in his fins. He's off colour at the moment. But it looks absolutely beautiful. Right, I'm going to go and put this little guy now into the um, into the shrimp room, and we'll get him acclimated, and we can pop him back in the uh, in the tank. Okay guys, I've changed my mind and I've put him in in the acrylic shrimp tank for now. We're just um, acclimating him in now. We've tipped some of the water out and we've replaced it with a bit of tank water here. Look at those fins, that is absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful fish that is. displaying away there wanting to get out of the bag but we can't rush these things and right next door we've got his his home to be which is running away beautiful now I went down to Ikea yesterday as I told you guys I know some of you guys are saying that I bet he buys some lighting but I came out of there that I didn't buy any lighting yesterday but what I did get was some of these lucky bamboos and um, I've trimmed them back because they're normally like a corkscrew on the top as they work around before the shoots come out but I trimmed them off left the roots on the bottom and I pushed that in amongst that that peat so they should root nicely and start growing well in there the waterfall's running lovely water's clearing up some of the mosses that I took from the uh, Brecon beacons like from the waterfall there's some here some here and these are from the land around the waterfall there's another big chunk there from the um, from the waterfall as well that was in that high flow area so hopefully that should be uh, that should take nicely all the other plants have perked up nice water's still very slightly cloudy but that's to be expected probably give it another 50 percent water change today at some point but this tank's lovely and cycled some of the shrimp that i have got in there i've taken out i've sold some and taken um some, some local people that i know so there's not many in there now I think there's only a couple of crystal one pregnant crystal uh, red in there and one buried up blue bolt which I had in there so um, that should be okay this guy's um, looking fabulous if you want to know where I got this little guy from Siam Better Fish UK so look them up, I had a look on um, on eBay and they're on there. Came packaged absolutely brilliantly. Nice bit of, um, got the heat pack in there first. 
which is still warm and then they've covered it with tissue and obviously he was then in his little bag and then that was uh, all sandwiched together and packaged lovely so they've done a lovely package job he's come in absolutely pristine condition fin perfect and eager to get out of that little bag so I'm just going to switch you off for a minute now and then when we come back we'll introduce him into this tank okay guys he's in the tank already chasing things around to eat look at that looks absolutely beautiful in there super happy with him he's going to go in amongst all these plants now he's got lots he's got a fully mature tank now to explore and he's looking very very happy in there Well, he's gone for a little rest in amongst the weeds, a well-deserved sleep after his um, after his night of travel through the postal system. Just chilling out there on that Anubius leaf on top of the rocks there. Here you are, he's come out again to see us. How are you doing after your travels, my little friend? Come and say hello to these lovely people. Look at the colours in that. Stunning fish. They certainly do love their fish. Down at uh, Siam Beta, that's for sure. Vivid colours. And he's on the prowl, looking for bits to eat. I'll just try him on a on a little prawn pellet a minute they're very small you might see them dropping down there let's see how he gets on with those any interest I'll have to give the guys a ring to see what they were feeding him He's off again. The shrimps will soon clean those pellets up. They'll be out from around the back in no time at all. Right, we'll let him settle in. He's got a bird's eye view now. He's got a penthouse view of his new home, which is here. I'm in the middle of making a lid for this at the moment. I'm gonna make a sort of a moon, half moon shaped lid that's just gonna cut around here because they do jump. I've got a piece of glass, which I cover the top of the tank with up there, as you can see. Very happy mooching around, shooting in through the back now, exploring his new, his new little tank. In fact, I might, I could, I might even leave him in there and get another one to go in here. I don't know yet. I'm going to have a go at breeding these guys, so I'm picking some nice ones and um, going to make up a few tanks, I think. And maybe put a few. I've been thinking about moving the bench tank here. I'll shift all my other stuff out of the way a minute. Been thinking about moving the old bench tank into the house to clear up a bit of space on the bench because I've got my laser cutter that side and all my other bits and bobs. That's another thing we can do today, that DIY brine shrimp hatcher that I made. I've got some eggs, so we could always fire some of those in there and make uh, a little batch of live brine shrimp eggs, uh, a brine shrimp babies to hatch out and we can feed the better those because they love those little guys. So we'll have a bit of live food going in there for him as well, as well as the bench tank for all the, um, all the hatchet fish as well, which are all doing well. All the shrimps are doing well. Endlers have settled in. And we're in dire need of a trim because it's got very, very heavy of the moss have grown. We've got a little bit of filamentaceous, a little bit of algae now growing off of these because of the lack of flow. So I think that's my next job is going to get in here and trim this lot back, I think. Somebody's decided to somebody's decided to come out again. Ex 
straw in his new home. Little gulp of air. As you know, betters are a member of the Garami family and they're capable of breathing and taking oxygen and air, sorry, from the surface of the water. As you see them go up all the time, little gulps, and then they go back down again. Where are you going? There you are. Another little gulp of air. Yeah, I think he's going to love it in this new little tank that we've created for him here. Some of you ask how I clean the filter out. Basically, I just move those stones, that stone and that stone. Once those moss is attached to it, it's like a little jigsaw puzzle there and you can just take them off, put them back, take the filter out. None of the rocks around the outside here actually touch the filter which is inside everything's away from it so I can just lift the filter straight out wash the sponges out and replace it as and when I need to and then just put these little stones back in place just redirect the flow again where I want it to go through and then we're uh, we're good to go again There we are, he's gone this side now, he's having a look across thinking, when do I get to go in there? He's settling in now, starting to settle down, looking around, picking up on little water fleas and things that are living in this tank. Checking himself out in his reflection, picking off all the little fleas, might even taking a couple of little snails off there actually. Little tiny baby snails, little flaring of his gills, absolutely lovely, look at that, couldn't be happier with him. Going to give us a little show here, you see a lot of different colours of better but I've not come across one on this colour sequence before with the reds going into the white, with the blue going into the red then into the white. Well, his little halfway house before he goes into the other one if I decide to put him in there or end up getting some more I don't know what I'm gonna do yet but he'll be very very happy in this tank if he uh, if I decide to leave him in there you know he's picking away at different things up there what are you after now but what are you after little snails and stuff yeah he's actually trying to go for the snails I think he got one <laughs> Thoroughly enjoying himself already, look at that. You gonna get him? I think it's a snail. Let's have a closer look. Oh no, I think it's it's actually a little bit of root. It's a bit of a root from the or from one of the plants, I think. I think he thinks it's a bloodworm. <laughs> well, it's nice to see him settling in. You can play with your stick for a while there, mate. You look happy. Always had a soft spot for betters. Siamese fighting fish. Beautiful coloration. And they're breeding some fantastic colors into them these days. With the shorter fin varieties, the Dumbos, all the different strains of Splendors, different things you can get now. He likes something up in that corner. We'll breed some of these um, Artemia, I think. We'll get some of these brine shrimps going. 
feed him some of those. He'll chase them all around the tank, he will. Nice little mummy uh, yellow sakura shrimp there to be. You can see that um, bit of hair algae on the moss now. But we're going to get rid of that very, very soon. She's doing a grand job there, polishing up those, uh, polishing up the moss. You can see the oxygen being released through the uh, through the moss there. You can see the little bubbles, little purling going on. Some of the endlers there in the tank as well. Having a little play around. There's a young male there. You can see the transitional stage from the one on the left to the one on the right. It's a little bit dull and the colours just slowly start to come in. Lots of little sakuras running around in amongst this moss here. Lots of little snails as well. And you can go up and see these little hatchet fish. Hello, I do love these guys. This is the marble variety and that's that one there, that's the silver hatchet fish. These are harder to breed than in captivity. The marbles are a lot easier, they'll just scatter eggs in amongst the weeds. And you can breed those quite easily with, uh, when you've got the conditions right for them. Those big pectoral fins sticking out there. And they'll give them a quick flick and they'll jump up and they're capable of going around eight feet in distance when they hop out the water. They'll fly out the water after insects. And catch them in midair. Mr. Snail there, doing his job. Right little man, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go into uh, the shrimp room. I've got my little DIY brine shrimp hatcher that we've made and we're going to hatch you out some little baby Artemia, little baby brine shrimps, so you can have a little feed on those, okay? Right, the shrimp room. Now, we haven't been in here for a while. This is the old odds and bods tank. You can see the um, the mountain, uh, the white cloud mountain minnows in here, which I took out of the moss tank, the wild moss tank, and I put them in here because my friend didn't really want to look after the fish. But he said he'd just keep an eye on the moss and keep that going, which is brilliant. So I put those in here. They're really happy in here now with all this plant life and stuff whizzing about. We're back in the glary room. Everything glares in this room. But what we've got now, where's Frank? There he is. Hello, matey. Show you to the viewers. Haven't seen you for a while, have they? Hey, still miserable? Are you still miserable? Well, you're not too bad today. Not too bad. Water change day tomorrow for him. But what we're going to do now, we've got the brine shrimp eggs here. Now I use the decapsulated ones, which look like that. That means they uh, separate the uh, they separate the capsules from them, so they hatch and you get a lot cleaner. You don't get millions of thousands of little floating husks everywhere all over the tank. But we got the this is the um, the brine shrimp maker hatcher. Sorry that I made in the workshop if you're unfamiliar with that build it's called uh, I think it's called DIY brine shrimp hatcher and we put a little tap on there and we put an airline on it as well which I've rigged up now so when we turn it to the side we can let that air in and roll those little eggs around so turn that off for a minute get my little red spoon you don't want many of these obviously we got a lot of tanks here so I can feed them but I'm just going to put in a little teaspoon like that in the top dip them in shake them around and then we can start the old action going and that will start those eggs tumbling I'm gonna get a few that I want to wash around so I'm just gonna they're gonna take a couple of minutes to absorb that water And as you can see now, they're agitating away. There's a few stuck up there, but I'll wash them around in a minute 
and we'll get them down and that's going to keep those moving for about 30, well, I don't know, 24 hours just over I suppose you could start seeing a few hatch just keep your eye on them and uh, we'll check them out and I'll do a little video on these when we when they've hatched them we'll uh, we'll add them into the tank and you can see them feeding on them then yes what I use what I use is uh, one teaspoon for 240 ml of water 200 yeah one teaspoon of salt table salt will do to uh, put, mix it in with a little bit of lukewarm water first to, just to to dilute it make it up to about 240 ml and then tip it into a little bottle you can make these so simply out of a little coke bottle with an inverted lid drill a little hole a bit smaller than the airline and um, and then squeeze it in cut the airline to a point poke it through the hole first and that makes a nice seal then and you can turn it upside down put an airline on it with a non-return valve on it because obviously if it does self siphon back it'll go back into your uh, air pump and ruin that so always make sure you've got one of those fitted on anything with an air pump so that's cooking away nicely now we're going to leave that now bubble away i think we'll pop back out into the uh, into the workshop now and we'll have a look at the uh, the new better see how he's see how he's doing and um go from there all right guys we're back in the workshop tell mr man there's happy looking gorgeous and i couldn't be happier with him Anyway guys, thanks for uh, tuning in and watching the video today. Hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, drop it in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, pop back and have a look at uh, some of the other videos I've done. There's over 200 videos there on various subjects, different DIY builds, and um, lots of different information about lots of different topics. So uh, pop back and have a look at that. May encourage you to subscribe to the channel. So from me, and this little guy here, who has no name at the moment, drop one in the uh, section below if you uh, come up with a good name for him. And as always, guys, you're all stars. Love you loads. Take care. And I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Bye bye. Just me and my guitar.